Hi guys, welcome to Mastermed Academy. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive updates on our future videos. Today I'm going to be talking about innate immunity. I have made three parts of innate immunity. This is part one. So let's just get on with it. So what are the two types of immunity? We have an innate immunity. We have an adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is non-specific immunity that rapidly eliminates microbes which enter host tissues. It is phylogenetically older and it provides early defense against infections. In contrast, adaptive immunity is a specific immunity and it requires expansion of lymphocytes. It takes time to develop and has a memory response, which is more robust and fast. I have marked the key points, key four points that you should know regarding innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity. What are the major components? We have epithelial barrier, we have phagocytes, we have dendritic cells, we have mast cells, we have natural killer cells, complement eosinophils. Epithelial barrier. The major barrier between body and external environment is an epithelial barrier. Now, exactly where it is present, it could be in the skin, it could be in the GI tract, respiratory tract, and genitourinary tract. The epithelial barrier provides us with physical and chemical barrier. Defensins are peptide antibiotics which provide a chemical barrier against infections. Epithelial barrier also contains keratin and tight junction. GI tract, bronchopulmonary, genitourinary tract. They have mucus as the barrier. We also have to remember that epithelial cells harbor lymphocytes, intraepithelial lymphocytes that kill microbes and infected cells. Neutrophils, PMNs, also known as polymorphonuclear leukocytes. That's the full form of PMNs. They are the most abundant leukocytes in blood circulations, have multi-lobed nucleus. They have a short lifespan, approximately six hours in circulation. They are the first responders to the inflammation site, very high yield point for step boats. The next two points, are also very high yield for step exams. What are the granules that neutrophils possess? Number one, we have specific granules. Number two, we have azurophilic granules. Specific granules consists of leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, LAP, lysozyme, and lactoferrin. Azurophilic granules consists of myeloperoxidase, acid phosphatase, beta glucuronidase, and proteinases. Now, why did I put myeloperoxidase in a small box because i want to tell you the point that myeloperoxidase is actually used in a process called respiratory oxidative burst in simple words this means that respiratory oxidative burst uses oxygen free radicals to kill the bacteria and in that process there is a very big role that is played by myeloperoxidase. Now this is a 3D picture of neutrophils. As you can see, we have one lobe here, the second lobe here, and another lobe here. And these small bubbles are the granules. It could be specific granules or it could be azurophilic granules. Macrophages. Macrophages play three key roles. First is the phagocytosis, second is the cytokine production, and third is the antigen presentation. What is phagocytosis? Phagocytosis is basically macrophage eating a pathogen, storing it in a phagosome, and then that phagosome will bind to the lysosome, which contains the deadly enzymes that will lead to killing of the pathogen. The second point is the cytokine production. And now this is very high yield for step exams. You need to know what are the cytokines that are produced by macrophages. Interleukin-1, tumor necrotic factor alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-8, and interleukin-12. You have to remember it and store it in your hippocampus. Believe me, there are many question banks out there and one way or the other they like to ask about the cytokine production. The third is the antigen presentation. This is a structure of a macrophage with a nucleus here. This is a very important key slide that I will urge you guys to remember for step exams. 
Key surface receptors of macrophages, you need to know them. So on the left hand side of the column, we have surface receptors of macrophages. And on the right hand side of the column, I have a signal component here. So CD14 receptor on macrophage binds lipopolysaccharide. Very high yield to know that lipopolysaccharide is present only in gram negative bacteria. FC receptor binds the FC portion of antibody. Now, for those who don't know how an antibody looks, this is the light chain here, and this is the heavy chain here, and we have the FAB region, and here we have the FC region. So FC receptor will bind the FC portion of antibody, so exactly here. C3B receptor will bind C3B complement, and I put in bracket that it's an opsonin. So what is an opsonin? Opsonin in simple terms is painting or targeting the bacteria for the macrophage to attack it so for example this is a bacteria let's imagine this is a bacteria c3b will paint itself here or it will target the bacteria and coat it with c3b and a nearby macrophage will actually detect it and will attack and kill the bacteria so opsonization is a process by which a pathogen is marked for ingestion and destruction by phagocytes like macrophage in our drawing. MHC2 receptor will bind CD4 T cell. B7 receptor will actually bind CD28. It leads to cytokine production. CD40 will bind CD40 ligand and lead to class switching of antibodies. Class switching means that from IgM where will you go? Will you go to IgA or some other IgG? Dendritic cells. Now, dendritic cells are myeloid derived cells. They produce numerous cytokines and they have two functions. One is to initiate inflammation and the second is to stimulate adaptive immune response. They are the antigen presenting cells. Very high yield to know for step exams. Not only we have dendritic cells as APCs, but we also have macrophages and B cells as APCs. Two major population of dendritic cells are classical and plasma cytoid. Majority is classical cells. Plasma cytoid cells are a major source of type 1 interferon, which would actually help in fighting against viruses. This is a structure of a dendritic cells. The next is mast cell. Now mast cell mediates an allergic reaction in skin and other local tissues. They originate from the same precursor as basophils but are not the same cell type. I keep forgetting the second point but since I made this presentation now I remember it. So you need to remember this point. Mast cell granules contain histamine. Histamine is basically a vasoactive amine that causes bronchoconstriction and vasodilation. We also have heparin, tryptase and eosinophil chemotactic factors as the granules. The mast cell will bind to FC portion of IgE and that will lead to a process called degranulation. Mast cells are involved in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. We have four types of hypersensitivity reaction. Mast cells are involved in type 1. You need to remember that. This is a structure of a mast cell. As you can see, it's clearly a big cell with a nucleus and we have so many granules inside. There is a neighboring mast cell here and this is basically broken, i.e. they are degranulating and expelling their granules outside. The next is basophils. Basophils are multi-lobe nucleus staining dark purplish blue color. They mediate allergic reaction and are very short-lived. The granules of basophils consist of histamine, which causes vasodilation, as I mentioned, leukotrienes, heparin, being an anticoagulant, and some prostaglandins. Now, basophilia. Philia means increased number of cells. Basophilia means increased number of basophils. If the word says eosinophilia, it means increased number of eosinophils. If you ever hear a word called neutropenia, penia means decreased number of cells. So if you have neutropenia means you have decreased number of neutrophils. Basophilia is quite uncommon to see. 
But if it is seen, you have to remember somewhere in your mind that it could be a sign of a malignancy called chronic myeloid leukemia, CML. Additionally, it's also seen in thalassemia, anemia of chronic disease, iron deficiency anemia, and lead poisoning. This is a structure of a basophil here. As we can see, there are many nucleuses here, multi-lobed, and we also have granules, and you can see the color as a dark purplish blue color. Natural killer cells, NKCs, they are derived from the lymphoid lineage. Granules of the NKC contain perforins and gran enzymes, which induce apoptosis. Very high yield point to remember, what are the activators of NKC? You need to remember this point. They include interleukin-2, interleukin-12, interferon alpha, and interferon beta. Interleukin-2, if you have studied the kidney section in first aid, then you must remember that interleukin-2 can be used as an immunotherapy to treat renal cell carcinoma. And that is why the next point is another very high yield point to remember for step exams. Aldeus-leukin, interleukin-2, is used in the treatment of renal cell carcinoma. So the three key functions of NKC are to induce, to kill in the absence of MHC1 on target viral cell surface, produce interferon gamma activating macrophages, and also to kill via a process called ADCC, also known as antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. I know it's a mouthful, but the name gives it away. So guys, this is a diagram that explains point number one from the previous slide regarding the key functions of natural killer cells. So let's imagine that this is a cell and we have an intracellular pathogen in it. Let's name the top cell as cell number one and the bottom cell as cell number two. Now cell number one express normal MHC class one molecule, while cell number two does not express class one MHC molecule. Now what is the difference? And let's understand both the processes. So in cell number one, we have an expression of MHC class one, but we also have another receptor here which expresses the pathogenic antigen. Now since the natural killer cell recognize MHC class one molecule, it will not induce apoptosis of cell number one, but we have cytolytic T cells, also known as CD8 positive T cells. They will recognize that foreign antigen present on the receptor of cell number one and induce apoptosis. Cytolytic T cell belongs to adaptive immunity. I will discuss in detail cytotoxic T cells in my adaptive immunity video. So let's understand cell number two now. Now cell number two expresses no such receptor. Neither it expresses self MHC class one molecule, nor it expresses foreign antigen on its receptor. Since we have no receptor that expresses the foreign antigen, cytolytic T cells cannot induce apoptosis of cell number two. But since there is no self MHC class one molecule expression, natural killer cell will induce apoptosis of cell. So in both cases, we have apoptosis of the cells. Eosinophils. Eosinophils stain red with acidic dye eosin and has a bilobate nucleus. This is a bilobate nucleus. This is how it looks. Bone marrow is induced by interleukin-5 to release eosinophils. Granules contain major basic protein, and many others like eosinophil, peroxidase, histaminase, and many more. If you just want to remember one thing, you have to remember major basic protein and histaminases. Eosinophils help defense against helminthic infections. And it also uses ADCC process to kill cells like natural killer cell. This is the structure of an eosinophil and we can see it's quite reddish orangish color with granules so many of them here. Eosinophilia. As I mentioned previously, philia is increased number of cells, so eosinophilia is increased number of eosinophils. Now, what are the major causes for this? This is a really nice mnemonic that I found in Google. N stands for neo neoplasia, 
Now, what kind of neoplasia? Chronic myeloid leukemia and Hodgkin lymphoma. If you remember, basophilia also can indicate chronic myeloid leukemia. A stands for allergy and atopy, asthma. C stands for Churg-Strauss syndrome and connective tissue disorders. Churg-Strauss syndrome is basically a vasculitis. For now, you just remember only this that Churg-Strauss syndrome is a type of vasculitis. P stands for parasitic infection. ADCC, i.e. antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Natural killer cells have CD16 on them that will bind the FC portion of IgG. While eosinophils bind FC portion of IgE. This is very high yield because you must know that natural killer cells will bind FC portion of IgG and eosinophil will bind FC portion of IgE. They are both different. Next is the complement. Complement is basically serum protein that is produced by the liver. The complement proteins reside in the circulation in a homeostatic state. They are not always active in the circulation. They are only active when they encounter a foreign pathogen. Once activated, a sequence of reactions are generated which leads to formation of anaphylatoxin, opsonin and membrane attack complex. I will have a separate seminar on complement and I will explain you in detail exactly what it means and what are the functions. But right now you just have to remember the end goal of complement is to form a membrane attack complex. And the membrane attack complex leads to killing of the pathogen. Now, deficiency of complement can lead to bacterial infections. There are various types of deficiencies and various types of bacterial infections. I will cover them in my future videos in complement. Now here, this is a structure of a bacteria, cell membrane and intracellular space of the bacteria. And this is the membrane attack complex here. So the membrane attack complex consists of C5B, C7, C6, C9, C8. And imagine that this is a funnel. It's like a needle funnel. And from here, we basically pour deadly enzymes that goes into the cell membrane of the bacteria and results in killing of the bacteria. So this was the last slide from part one innate immunity. I hope you guys liked this video. Subscribe and press the bell icon to receive future updates on our videos.